Hey everybody, this is Raul, critical care nurse, 22 years and counting, and today I'm going to talk about that pain in the neck. That's right, that uh, radiculopathy that you have that radiates down your back, down your arms, causes pain, causes numbness and tingling, dropping of things. You wake up like this, right? You sleep on one side, your hand crunches over. It stinks. It's real painful and people just don't understand, right? So you talk to your doctor, it's been months, you've had your MRI and your doctor comes back and says, you know what, we got to operate it's a surgical procedure. They usually give you two choices and if they don't, if they only give you one, be aware, you surgically you have two choices um, in most cases. One is an old time fusion, they've been doing those for 50 years, they've got it down pat. Um, it's the gold standard to repair it and now you've got this up and coming new procedure where they actually don't fuse it what they actually do is they replace the disc I'm going to talk briefly about both the pros and cons okay let's talk about the gold standard doctors know what they're doing with it they've been doing it a long time they know the risks they know the instruments they know the procedures it is effective uh, in really decompressing that nerve that's causing the pain um, they're starting to do a more anterior approach, which is better. Um, those are all the pros for it. If your doctor does that, chances are he's done it a lot already, comfortable with it. That's the, the plus. The downsize is that it's a fusion, especially if you're younger. You know, if you're in 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, and so on, 60s, you may really want to think about doing a fusion because of what a fusion is going to do. It's going to they're going to fuse with a bone graft those the two vertebrae, right? And what that does is it limits your mobility. You're going to lose a little mobility in your neck. You're going to be a little stiffer. I'm not going to say you're not going to be able to bend and turn because you are, but you're going to have a limitation because that area of the disc that was supposed to bend, it no longer bends. Drawback number two, 25%, um, this is what the statistics say, 25% of people who have had that procedure have some equipment problems. Um, they either have some migrations, of some of the equipment stalls, breakage of the screws, uh, things like that. So 25%, one out of four, will generally need a second surgery within 10 years. Um, one out of four will generally need a second surgery to go in to stabilize it, take out equipment, put in whatever, but that's the other downside to that. Okay. Um, the pain afterwards is not bad. It's pretty well controlled. Okay. Now the young blood, the up and coming. Up and coming is called an artificial um, a cervical disc replacement. Basically, they said, why are we fusing these bones? Let's just take out the bad disc and replace it with an artificial disc. What that does is it keeps the movement intact, all right? Because it's replacing a disc, it's not fusing, so you can move. It's great movement. Um, that's the biggest plus you have for that, okay? Um, they've been doing it in Europe for years and years and years, okay? Uh, 2007, the FDA finally approved it here in, in, in the USA for cervical. They had approved a little earlier for lumbar, for cervical. Uh, so we don't have any long-term studies on that yet. That's one of the downsides. We don't have long-term studies on it. They started officially in 2007 as this recording. It's 2015, so we don't have 10 years. But the predictions have been that we're not going to have that 25% failure factor. In fact, looking at some of the studies from Europe and some of the feedback from Europe, they're not seeing it. In fact, we're running at you know eight years now, and we're not seeing that problem that you see with the fusion. So you will less likely need a second surgery. Uh, the results are instant. I've had a couple of friends who do it, and I mean they go in the morning crying in pain, and by the afternoon they wake up and they think they have, they have a little incisional pain nothing bad but their arm is perfectly fine now they go home that same day so what am i saying i'm saying you've seen it after for months and months and months this pain that that only you understand that pain can't sleep it's just there you get you even get tired of telling people about it because you know you're always in pain right and then you go in in pain they put you in anesthesia where you wake up and it's gone Okay, um, you, you do get that kind of relief with the fusion too, by the way, I want to be clear, because as soon as they decomp decompress the nerve, whether it's the replacement or the fusion, you're going to get relief. Now this happens in a lot of the cases. It doesn't happen in 
all the cases because it depends on how long it's been going on and you know the, your doctor will give you a better idea because everyone's different my two friends and a lot of testimonies you see on YouTube will say it was instant for them but there's certain cases where it's not okay um, people are doing it same day same day surgery you go in the morning by the afternoon late afternoon you go home that's a big plus the less the hospital say the less complications Work in a hospital, love it, but I got to tell you, you really don't want to be a patient too long. You just don't, okay? So that's another plus for the uh, cervical. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It's a frontal approach. They can go in through the right or the left, and if they give you a choice, go in through the left. That's usually the best recommendation. Check with your doctor. I'm not your doctor. Check with your doctor. And the reason I, I would do it that way is because they have some incidence of dysphagia because of a nerve when they go through the right which means that the swallowing becomes a little funny or affected afterwards, you know, through the right. You can get a little dysphagia through the left, and it's, it's not because of the nerve, though. It's just because all of a sudden you have this disc which seems foreign, but after a couple of days you don't notice it. But my friend did say that the first a day or two he felt the swelling was a little funny, but it went away. It went away, and, he, and it worked for him, and he's extremely happy, just like um, so many other people that you see the testimonies on. Um, the incision is only about this big. It's not huge, but it's in a very sensitive area, and it is very noticeable. So um, you want to take care of it, just like any scar, especially in the neck. It's like a facial scar. It's a very sensitive area. Don't keep it out in the sun. Cover it. Fresh tissue will burn, and also you get a dark line uh, versus the surrounding area. Uh, use a scar gel. Use something that has silicone based, and here's the clincher. Use something that has vitamin C serum. Anything for the face and for the neck, if it has vitamin C serum, it's just going to heal that much faster, okay? Um, I'll give you a recommendation for that, all right? Um, usually, uh, if you have the procedure later in the day, 5, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, even 2 o'clock, sometimes the doctors will keep you overnight afterwards, and that's not a bad idea, all right? So take that. Most people, if you aren't don't have heavy work, if you work in an office, can be back to work as early as 4 weeks. If you have more manual labor, it can take you as much as 6 weeks. Uh, so the recovery time is pretty good. Not very painful afterward. They give you Tylenol. Not very bad. Um, some might give you a little stronger, but usually you don't require that much. Uh, it, depending on how long you've had the pain, you may need physical therapy afterwards. Um, but it's gotten a lot of positive responses. So you have the old school, which is the fusion, which they know how to do. They've been doing it forever. Okay. Uh, the downside is the 25% chance that within the next 10 years, you're gonna, they're going to have to go back in and you're going to lose some mobility, okay? Um, you have the disc, artificial disc replacement, uh, and really the, the, the only downside compared to the other procedure is that um, we don't have long-term studies. We don't have 10 years yet, right? 2007, as of this recording, it's 2015, so it's not quite 10 years. Uh, and here's the other thing. When you're choosing a doctor, I would try to get someone who's been doing it for at least over three years, preferably five years. And it's not that they don't know what they're doing. They understand the concept. It's pretty clear. But they use special instrumentation, and if they haven't had quite the practice with it, then, you know, they may want, you may want someone who's been doing it a lot. So that's one of the drawbacks is make sure the surgeon that you do use has been doing it for a while. Okay? Um, but other than that, that's how it goes. All right? I made this video a little longer than usual. If you have any questions or comments, feel free. And this is Raul. As always, hope I helped.